who come to vote. Yes, those surveys were completed by voters who came to vote because it was here at the polls as people were coming and going. And another fact here is if we were to buy a new modular today, it would cost us about approximately $200,000. The days of the modulars that we have now are no gone. If you want to buy a modular, what do you have to put in that modular? Bathrooms. We don't have bathrooms in our modulars now. Our students go into the school to use the restrooms. But if we were to buy a modular now, there would have to be restrooms installed. What an expense that would be for our community. And I take insult that members of this community, whether speaking on behalf of the Budget Committee or not, but I have the letter to the editor right here, to say that board members have no experience managing $10,000 projects or $22 million projects. Nobody in this community fully board knows, board. The, nobody in this community board fully board. knows the resume board. of board, board members. What point of order? I thought it was taught on behalf of the budget committee. No, 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 can't have both ways. It's him as a citizen. I'm not arguing with what you're saying, other than you pointed to the letter, and he wrote that as a citizen, not as a budget member. Mark Paul said he's speaking for the budget committee. All right, I'll put it. That's it. That's it. Sorry. I will put the letter on the floor. I'll put it there. I, as a, as a citizen of Alton, have far more experience in managing just a $10,000 project. I can tell you experience about managing $1.3 million budgets at the University of New Hampshire. I can tell you about experiences of providing recommendations and reviewing capital budgets for up to $200 million. I can tell you this, and I'm only 23 years old. For members of this budget committee, for insults against board members like this, I find unconscionable. And ladies and gentlemen, under the last warrant article today, I will be addressing some of these issues. It's time for the personal insults to stop and for this community to gather behind a building project that hours and hours, months and months, and years and years of effort have been put into this. And I understand there's a problem with the way it's being presented today with Article with RSA 3218A of what Mr. St. Cyr previously talked about. But ladies and gentlemen, the time has come where we need to start making decisions for the betterment of education in this community. And I hope that the supporters, or the voters of Alton, on March 13th will vote to support this warrant article in hopes that we get past the 60%. And that yes, if it takes a special meeting for us to go through the court system, I have no problem doing that. But I'll also remind members of this community, the state of New Hampshire runs a $10 billion budget. Every two years it costs about $10 billion. The legislature is, is the ones responsible for appropriating all of those funds, 424 members, with the consent of the governor. I, as a state representative, don't go out to every single capital project that the state of New Hampshire is involved with. We spent $16 million to renovate Hampton Beach and the projects down there. Did I, as a representative, go out and make sure that everything was done correctly? No. We have employees in the state of New Hampshire responsible for doing that. Same at the county. And yes, if we're going to go out and have an $18 million building project, you can bet that board members will be involved. But board members necessarily don't have the expertise of overseeing where nails go and all the things that go with the building project. We will hire the appropriate experts to help us do that. And I tell you that the Board of Selectmen went for a $2 million event, uh, proposed bond a couple years ago for the Police Department, Town Hall, uh, and a few of the other buildings. Is the selectman going to go out and find outside help to help manage that project? You bet they would. That would be my expectation. So I ask you to support this warrant article. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Howe, in fact, the high school was built with a um, project manager. We had uh, lawsuits following the construction of the building. We have ongoing issues today. And so, you know, you might want to think about that. The other thing is, is that um, certain people who stand up here who represent us at the state level, um, you might want to look at the unsustainable retirement system and the fact that we're a trillion dollars debt in New Hampshire. So, no, you know what? He got to say, he's up there tooting his horn about all the experience and everything, but look at the state of the state. Yes, Anna. 
My name is Anna Griffin. I don't want to get too close to this. That guy was sick. <laughs> sure, it's covered in germs, but then so am I. My name is Anna Griffin. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a resident. I'm on the... What am I on? <laughs> Supervisor to the checklist. I think that everybody understands pretty much how everybody feels about this, and I personally came down here to say, can we move the question? Yes. We have a, mo a motion to move the question. We have a second right here. All, uh, it requires two-thirds vote. All those in favor of moving the question, please raise your cards. Opposed? Opposed? Uh, actually, there's no question to move. Uh, we'll, do we have a motion? Yeah, do I have a motion to restrict reconsideration so moved. of Article 3? So moved. Move, seconded? Seconded. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 3, raise your cards. Thank you. Passes. Article 4. Should Article 3 be adopted, shall the Alton School District raise and appropriate the sum of $1,750,000 to add geothermal heating and cooling to all the central school, including equipment installation, professional service fees, site development fees, and any other items incidental to and or necessary for said heating and cooling system. To authorize the issuance of not more than $1,750,000 of bonds and notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds and notes to determine the rate of interest thereon, and further to raise an appropriate additional sum of $39,871.11 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. This article is contingent upon approval of Article 3. The Alton School Board recommends $1,750,000 by a vote of 5 to 0, the Alton Budget Committee recommends $1,750,000 by a vote of 6 to 1. Who moves the article? Chris Rodgeropoulos. Second. Jeff St. Cyr. Who'd care to discuss the issue? Talk in favor first. Both recommended it. Is there an amendment? Um, no. 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 No, no amendments, sir. Uh, any discussion over here? Any discussion from the audience? Wow. Uh, do we have a motion to restrict? Do we have one? Okay. I just wanted to say, I think you do need to amend it, don't you? Because it says it's contingent on Article 3, which is no longer Article 3. It will be Article 3. It'll be added to the end, but it's still going to be numbered Article 3. Okay. Uh, what we're trying to do here is get uh, the order on which they're discussed and they show up on the ballot. That's the purpose, but it'll still be number nine. Um, any other discussion? Do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration on Article 4? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Jeff St. Cyr. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 4, raise your cards. All opposed? Article 4 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 5, should Article 3 be adopted, shall the Alton School District raise and appropriate the sum of $2,070,555 to construct a gymnasium at the Alton Central School, including equipment, professional service fees, site development costs, and any other items incidental and or necessary for said gymnasium, to authorize the issuance of not more than $2,070,555 of bonds and notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act and authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $47,162.64 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. This article is contingent upon approval of Article 3. 
the Alton School Board does or does not recommend two million seventy thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars by a vote of five to zero. The Alton Budget Committee does not recommend two thousand two million seventy thousand five fifty five by a vote of two to five. Who moves the motion? I do. Chris I draw up a second. Second. Jeff St. Cyr. Do we have an amendment? I do. I, I would like to amend this to remove the word not from the notation at the bottom of the Alton School Board. No, you have to remove both. Oh, that's three. Oh, you don't need a motion to do that. It's just a typo. Just a typo, but it's still it's different than what was presented to the board. It doesn't matter. Matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't no. need to be amended. I'm sorry. The legal counsel has told us that it doesn't need to be amended, so I I, um, I withdraw my amendment. Any discussion on Article Five? Question. Yes. If you if you want to have a special meeting for the bond, what will happen to this article? What will happen? Get a little closer. Uh, okay. If you if you're talking about having a special meeting for the eighteen million dollars, what is going to happen with this article if it passes March? How are you going to? Uh, how are you going to refer back to the article if it goes to a special meeting? Talking about Article 5, the gymnasium article, the Budget Committee did not recommend it. Okay, but the voters could vote it in. They could vote it in, uh, and if it doesn't take you over the 10%, then yes, you would have the authorization to sell the bonds, but the school board doesn't have to sell the bonds, all right? In other words, it's contingent on Article 3. But Article 3 would only be acted upon at a special meeting. A special meeting. That's right. And so would that special meeting then refer back to these votes here? No, I think, no, because I think what will happen, the, the issue is, how is DRA going to look at this? Should Article 3 be adopted language? Are they going to say, well, you voted for it. Uh, you voted for Article 3. The vote was invalid because of the uh, not recommended. Uh, therefore, it's not really adopted. I don't know uh, what their reaction to it will be. But if this, article, if this article is approved and DRA and bond council say, yes, this is a valid article, uh, then obviously if you get the special meeting, you'll only ask the voters to approve Articles 3 and 4. Article 3 and 4. Yeah. Which are the $18 million article and the uh, thermal. He's talking Jim. You're talking about the gym, I understand. Okay. So, okay, so in March, if this is voted in, this is going to stand by itself. Well, I don't know. I think that'll be up to bond council because if you have Article 3 adopted in March, even though it's invalid, then the question becomes, is bond council going to say Article 5 is valid or not? If he says it's not, then it's not a problem it will just become part of the request for a special meeting. If he says it is valid, then that's one less bond article that has to be approved by the voters. The school board does not have to sell the bonds. It isn't going to cost you anything if you never get Articles 3 and 4 approved. Okay, so if, if the, if the um, voters do the three-fifths on the $18 million bond, is, is that when the is that when the school board is going to have a special meeting, or and if it well, doesn't pass by the two thirds, are they still going to have a special meeting? That's up to the school board, and it's not two thirds; it's three fifths. Okay, three fifths. Uh, they're going to have to make that decision uh, after the uh, after the official ballot voting. The official ballot voting on articles three, 
4 and 5, well, 3 and 4, certainly, um, or Article 3, let's keep it simple, has no legal effect on the special meeting. In other words, the special meeting stands by itself. The fact that if the voters approve Article 3, that tells the school board, yeah, you really should try to get a special meeting because the voters really want this. But they can go back even though they don't get the three-fifths um, in March. They could. They could petition for a special school district meeting, but they'd have to convince the court that it's a good idea. And, and Article 4 and 5 would be dependent upon the DRA or the bond? I think, it'd, I think it'd be bond council, and I think he, he would probably say that they are also invalid because Article 3 was not adopted. Okay, so there would have to be three articles probably at that special. Well, I, I said probably. I'm not the bond lawyer. But since they say, the, the question is going to be whether in the, um, to the mind of the bond lawyer and DRA, uh, the should Article 3 be adopted language means it has to be valid. In other words, mm -hmm. they have to have the authority to do it, or does it just mean they have to vote in favor of it? I suspect they're going to say, no, no, it means it would have to have been valid. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Valid on the other one passed. Okay. Thank you. Additional discussion on Article 5. Yes, Mr. Do I have permission from the Budget Committee to speak on this article? Sure. Like, all right, that's taken care of. <laughs> okay. We do not recommend two gyms because we believe that this is a luxury, and it is a luxury the town can't afford. By building an additional gym for $2 million, you would affect and in fact have two gyms totaling in excess of 10,000 square feet. I've had an opportunity to travel to many schools in the state, watch my kid play ball, and I can't remember off the top of my head any school that has two gymnasiums. Now I understand that one is to help uh, stretch out, for instance, the cafeteria area, but it also leaves half a gym as a gym. And my question would have to be asked, there had to be another alternative to expand the cafeteria as opposed to keeping an old gym at 5,000 square feet or whatever that is and adding an additional 5,000 plus square, uh, square feet. I was at the meeting where it was proposed by the school board and it was offered that, well, uh, sometimes the um, uh, townspeople, you know, bump out the kids to use the gym. I didn't make that up. I'm just telling you what I heard, sitting down in the, sitting down in the audience. If the town needs another gym, very simply, let the town build another gym. Last I looked, we've got a beautiful gym right over here in the high school. We, got a, we, we, we would have another full-size gym if the building passed in the other school. Why does this town of 5,000 people need three gymnasiums? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Steve Renner. Um, first, I would begin, I would argue that Alton Central does not have a gym. Alton Central has an existing multi-purpose room. It is not only a gym, it is the auditorium. It's where assemblies are held. It's where theater productions are put on. It is a multi-purpose room. It will remain so should this gym warrant pass and a new gym be constructed. If you look where we are now, we are in an auditorium. Yes, we are fortunate to have a beautiful gym and a beautiful auditorium. The elementary school students deserve the same privilege. It's not about building it for community use. It's providing the students and the athletes of Alton with a gymnasium that is safe and appropriate for their activities and freeing up that multi-purpose room. Yes, it can still be used as a gymnasium. It will also serve as the cafeteria. It will serve as the theater. It serves as an assembly room, as it currently does. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. Do I hear a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 5? So moved. 
So move second over here. Yes, sir. Second. Uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 5, please raise your cards. All opposed? Article 5 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Now we move back to Article... Twenty-two. To hear reports of any committee, boards, trustees, commissions, officials, agents, or concerned voters, and vote to accept the same. Furthermore, to conduct any other business that may legally come before said meeting. You have a motion. Yes. A second. Yes. Uh, anyone want to uh, say something? Here? And I, I, I know where you're coming from. Please, no names or no individuals. There will be no names. I promise. All right. Thank you, Ms. Monner. My name is Jeff St. Cyr. I've been on the Ellen School Board for the past five years. I've helped the service community and three others in the state legislature as a state representative. I come before you all as a concerned voter, and it's a very important thing that I think we all need to consider here in the town of Alton. During Article 2, uh, we can, uh, the discussion was restricted, so I cannot offer my comments. Therefore, I'm offering, offering now, as this is the appropriate time. Civil discussion in this community has gotten worse over the years. I think it's something we've come to realize. We also need to take a, take, take a step back and look at ourselves. We also need to take a look at what's happening in Concord, and we also need to take a step back and look at what's happening in Washington, D.C. In 2007 to 2008, I served as the board's representative to the Budget Committee. I didn't miss very many meetings. I served with uh, Selectman Representative Peter Bolster, along with five other community members who were elected to serve on the Budget Committee as well. Mr. Adorabalus talked about the treatment of board members uh, during his discussion when he was talking about Article 2. Most recently, the Lakes Region Planning Commission held a presentation at the Gilman Museum. You may have seen the notice in the, the notice in the newspaper regarding it, as it talks about how board members and members of the public can work to get along at public meetings. I felt it was important for the board to attend, therefore I requested the Alton School Board be in attendance at this public presentation, as it was a public opportunity. Notice both in the Laconia Daily Sun and the Laconia Citizen, newspapers that I know people read in this community. I did also drop off a copy to the Selectman's office for both the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen. I do thank Barbara Howard for her attendance at this meeting, as I think it's something that's important for us as board members, community members, to learn about the topic and how we can work together and to get away from the civil discourse that's been happening for the past few years. It hasn't gotten any better, and I'm hopeful that in the next few years it will improve. As you may have read in the Bay Sider, a member of the community, Barbara Howard, uh, wrote a letter to the editor encouraging people to run for public office. And I think it's a very valid thing that she wrote that. Uh, filing started 10 days ago and concluded yesterday. When I was at the town hall yesterday at 5 o'clock, seeing what the final ballot was going to be for March 13th, in this community there are three contested races. The selectman seats for three years, the library trustee, and the cemetery trustee. That still leaves the school board race uncontested and the seat on the board of selectmen uncontested. Depending how things go in the March 13th election, the Budget Committee could have a Selectman's Rep, a School Board Rep, one elected member, and I know I believe one member's term is concluding this March, and he's running for the Board of Selectmen. That leaves you with four people. Why? A Selectman's Rep and a School Board Rep, they're going to be there no matter what after March 13th. You have one elected member remaining, you have one member running unopposed in the School Board. So therefore, you'll have the Selectman's Rep, School Board Rep, Mrs. Howard, and uh, there is one, one citizen from Alton running for a one-year seat. That leaves three, three, ter three seats potentially vacant come after March 13th. There are two seats open for three years in the Alton Budget Committee that nobody's running for. What will we have to do? Most likely will be a writing campaign. And, you know, in this town with a writing campaign, you can win our five or six votes. Is that the type of community we want? I believe we want people to put their name out to run for public office. I did it when I was at the age of 18, and I've never looked back. It's been a very valuable experience for anybody who lives in this community. So seriously consider. So come March 13th, I hope there will be a writing campaign for some members of this community to run for the Budget Committee. It's something that we need in order to really operate. You see here, we have the school board that presents their recommendations on behalf of the school board, and the, select, and the Budget Committee represents their position on behalf of the Budget Committee. And yesterday, you know, I, called, I made three phone calls yesterday afternoon around 2 o'clock. I won't say the who, but there are three people politically involved in this community. And really, in the end of the day, we can come up with great names of people to run for these town boards, commissions, trustees, but people don't want to put their name out there. And is it because of the discourse that's probably happened over the past few years? Probably. 
People don't want to see their names in their headlines, in the headlines of the, of the Bay Side of Laconia Sun, uh, Daily Sun, the union leader. The union leader was here today. People don't want to see that. And I can't convince people to run for the budget committee. I can't convince people to run for the school board. I can't convince people to run another public office in this community. Yet the three people I called yesterday, whether it be a selectman, a school board member, people politically involved, it doesn't matter who I called, but they're involved in this community, and we still couldn't come up with names for people to show up at the town hall before 5 o'clock to run for public office. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where we have the ability to elect our elected leaders, whether it be for president, Congress, the governor, and your local officials. Local officials. Officials. Not everybody has that right across this world. There are some who live under dictatorships. And do I believe we live in a dictatorship in Alton? No. We have the ability to elect our people to represent us, whether they be 18 or 180. Anybody who's willing to put their name on the ballot deserves credit. Why? Not only taking a risk, but they're taking a risk to serve their community. And it's something that we need here in this community. And I, as a school board member, have been involved in the last five years uh, as an elected member of this community. We'll pledge to work so that we can bring back stability to this community. I will make that offer today. You, I may have seen things over the past five years that I haven't liked, discussions we've had, tensions built, but I will make that pledge. And I bet my fellow board members will make the same. We aren't here for, the personal, for our personal benefit. I, as a board member, don't have children in the school. I'm not really old enough to have children, have my own family. You know, I'll admit that. I'm 23 years old. I just graduated from college. But that does not exclude me, exclude me from running for public office. Running for public office means you're 18 years old and you're a registered voter in your community. We should cherish people who take the time out of their days to run for public office. And I encourage you all to do the same. You know, the final period is already closed for the March 13th election, but there's still time for writing campaigns. There's still time, yet there's plenty of time down the road. Come, 20, come 2013, we'll have a new slate of openings on the town ballot and school ballot, and I hope you'll consider running. And if you, know, if you don't, I hope you encourage your neighbor. I'll conclude with, I appreciate your time coming today. You know, we are here to do the people's business. The business that's conducted today is it necessarily for the benefit of board members, not for the benefit of the budget committees, and for the citizens of Alton and what we want to do with public education. Public education is ours. It's what we make of it. And it's what we make of it with the community, from your input, the board's input, and with the administrative and teachers that we employ at Alton Central School. It's for the benefit of your children, your grandchildren, and your neighbors. And at the end of the day, I'll conclude, I hope you consider running for public office. It's something that's dear, near and dear to me, been involved for the past five years, I hope you'll consider the same. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Carr. I have a concern. I heard that the phone system that notifies the parents about uh, school being canceled, et cetera, that system was used. A message was sent across that about today's meeting. Is that, is that accurate? Yes, it is. Well, I guess the answer was yes. So, what about the rest of the community members? What? Is the ta this is paid by the tax dollars. All it did was notify of the date and time of the meeting. What about the rest of the taxpayers? There were ads. <clears throat> it was all posted in the newspaper. But it's different to be posted in the newspaper where everybody can see it versus someone get a, a phone call. We try to mail. We did try to get um, the ability to use our system to notify more than just our parents, but our license does not permit it. However, the select board could get a similar system. If yes. you could get, yes, there's a system that the select board can get. So perhaps you could bring that to the voters. But that didn't happen at this meeting. Correct. We do not have a license to allow that. So. Some other community were notified. No, everybody was everybody. notified. It was in the newspaper. I, I didn't get a telephone call. No, but you no. did see it in the newspaper. And I'm sure <laughs> given all the press that was there, I, you, voters would know. But, but for one group to get notified by phone and not the whole community with a public taxpayer's dollar system, I don't think is correct. Everybody, if Are you making the assumption that every parent votes in favor of everything? No, I'm not. I'm okay. asking about who was notified about the meeting. And it should be universally notified, everybody in town, 
on, on the system, not a few that sign up and some don't get it. It's taxpayers' dollars. It should be equal among everyone. And to just because they have a child in the school, they get a personal phone call saying there's a meeting and the rest of us don't? I don't think that's correct. I don't think it's, 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 it's not fair to everyone in town. I don't think it should be used for that. If it's not going to be everybody, it shouldn't be anyone. We have always used flyers for that purpose, but those flyers cost more money. And the actual um, cost of the system is not any additional cost to send out that notification. We have saved taxpayers dollars by not sending flyers home. So you're saying it's okay that a, a, a select few get notified by phone versus other because you're saving money? We try to do as much education as we can. We are an educational facility. We like everybody to know. It's in the newspaper. Um, I believe the Bayside did a, did a really nice article with all of the Warren articles in there explaining when the deliberative session was. Um, I, you know, I, I think the more that, as long as we can get the word out, I think it's important. I don't think any way that the board is trying to get more of one person, one group of people out versus the other. Um, I, we work really hard at trying to inform everybody. I, 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 it's, it's wonderful to sit here and clap because you were the ones who were getting notified. But, but uh, I disagree. I disagree, Mrs. Noyes, that you are telling everybody when, when you only have a few are getting a phone calls. It's not right to use that system to only notify a few people. Everybody should be notified equally. Mr. Miller. Okay, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, can I address that one concern that Mr. Carr had before she speaks? Yeah, I will. Mr. For the Board of Selectmen, I make the same offer to the school board. Is I'm willing to set up the town of Alton and the Alton School District, the free email system, free, no charge, to the town or to the school district where anybody in this community who wants to sign up for email updates from the town or the school can get them. It's free. It's an email system that's used in marketing today, and I have the skills necessary, and I would be more than willing to assist the town in setting that up. It's very easy to use, very easy to learn. And again, again, at the end of the day, it's free. So if you had 12,000 users, excuse me, if you had 2,000 email addresses on your list, and you want to send it six times a month, it's free. So you can send up to 12,000 emails per month, and I'll be more than willing to offer my services to the town of Alton, uh, and setting up a communica communication system where anybody in town can sign up. So if you have up to 12,000 users on the list, send an update once per month, it's still free. And again, I'm willing to work with the town of, the town of Alton, uh, as well as the IT department, their website team, so that we can set the system up for the community. Again, it's something that other communities do where they have email blast coming out from the town administrator. I'll tell you the town of Durham does it. And I'd be more than willing, again, to offer my services and no charge to the town of Alton if they'd like to so they'd like to pursue that option. So my offer stands, you know how to reach me. Again, the service is free. Thank you. Thank you. Anna. Um, sure. Was I first? Pardon me? I just wanted to say, um, Mr. Carr, that I wasn't given a special phone call. Mm -hmm. I did know about this because I'm a supervisor of the checklist. I don't think anybody was given any special consideration I think that the more ways we can use to notify our citizens, the better. It was in the Bayside, it was in the Laconia Sun. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him read. And yes, I know that's not the aphorism. However, <coughs> as much as you try to get the word out, there are a lot of, going to be a lot of people who say, well, I didn't know that. So this is one more avenue. I don't see that it was an issue. I do. And you're welcome to your opinion, as am I. Thank you. Yes. Just real quickly, as a parent with a kid in Alton Central Schools, you can opt out of the phone system. You didn't have to get a phone call. You didn't have to get an email, whatever. You can opt out of it. It's not mandated, mandatory. You're not made to get them or whatever. It's you sign up for them for FYI. They've always been an FYI 
for your information, here's what's going on, here's what time, nobody's ever said, come vote for this or come support this or, or you know, that kind of thing, like, you have to do this. Um, secondly, in light of transparency, and I know that our cameraman is, um, hopefully support this and hopefully our sound people. I know the Alton Budget Committee conducts a meeting afterwards that they're posted for and I'm here to um, politely ask for the camera and the sound system to stay on so that for the sake of transparency of the people here that they can, they'll know what, what takes place after the deliberative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, folk, uh, Bob, can you just hold one second? I want to do one thing in the meantime. I won't forget you. Terry Noyes, I think you want to make a presentation. I just, ha I just have two thanks that I would like to give out uh, before everybody has left. Um, after serving for two terms on the Alton School Board, Linda Gusens has chosen not to run for re-election. Linda has been an asset to the school district, and her dedicated service to the children of Alton is great, greatly appreciated. On behalf of the board, I would like to thank Linda for her service to this community. At this time, I would also like to, um, on behalf of the board, um, thank Superintendent Kathy Holt for her dedication uh, to the district and her passion for the education of the students of the Alton School District. Uh, we wish Kathy all the best in her future endeavors. Yes, long ago. Uh, I would suggest uh, for the level playing field, would the school use that robot calling system to publicize uh, next week's delivery session to the town? Absolutely. E equal play. Absolutely. And, it, and it has been done in the past. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm afraid, Chris, I have a 5.30 appointment, so I can't stay the videotape. I'll leave my camera with a trustworthy person. Thank you. Any other business to come before this meeting? I have a motion to dissolve this meeting. Oh, motion. <laughs> over here. Meeting's dissolved. I want to thank everyone. Uh, this could have been a very contentious meeting, and I want to thank everyone for cooperating and working with us on this. Thank you.